Hi everyone. Um, in this video, we are going to talk about the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. Um, this is really working to figure out what the enthalpy of vaporizations, or really the enthalpy of any phase transition, happens to be, or the temperature of any phase transition, happens to be at different pressures. So in the last video, we talked about how these different phases and these different transitions occur at different temperatures and pressures. And the clausius clapeyron equation is going to work to try to pull all of this together. So we now have to start thinking about chemical potential. I know that, I don't know, Chapters and chapters ago, chapter seven, we mentioned that there was this thing called chemical potential, and I promised that we would get to it. Well, we're almost there. Um, chemical potential is really talking about what material, what thing we are considering. It's really the energy per mole or the molar energy of a species. So during a phase change, the only thing that is changing is the state of the material. We still have water, it's just going from a solid to a liquid. When the state of material changes, that chemical potential changes. And this embodies things like how close the atoms are to each other, their intermolecular forces, things like this. This chemical potential works to embody all of that. And so when we think about phase changes, we have to think about changes in this chemical potential. So now if we take a deeper look at Gibbs, Gibbs energy is given as the energy, the internal energy minus TS plus PV. And the internal energy is Ts minus PV. So if we plug this in, we get G is equal to Ts minus PV plus our sum of mu N minus Ts plus PV. And so the Ts's and the PV's cancel out. And this gives us that Gibbs is really just equal to the sum over the chemical potentials. And so if we think about the change of Gibbs and we want to say that there are two species, so a phase change going from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas, then the change of Gibbs is given as the sum of the changing of the chemical potential and the number of moles of each species in each state. And so we can say that this guy, for example, is a solid and this guy is a liquid. And as we, as we change phases, we're going to be changing the number of moles of solid and the number of moles of liquid that exist. And in turn, and as that happens, the chemical potential for each of those changes. Now, your book goes through some kind of hairy math, um, but we can start with that definition of Gibbs, and we can play with some definitions of chemical potential and some Maxwell relations, and eventually we can arrive at the Clapeyron equation. And this is really talking about how the pressure, the change of pressure and the change of temperature are related to these properties of the phase change. And so this is the enthalpy of the phase change. This is the temperature of the phase change. 
And this is the volume change. So um, thinking about the volume that a one mole of ice takes up versus the volume that one mole of water takes up. As we phase change, that volume that that is that volume of that species changes. Now, the Clapeyron equation is often we're going to write it in terms of delta H of vaporization, but it turns out that the Clapeyron equation is generic. It can be applied to any phase transition. And so you can use these relationships to find delta H of fusion um, as you change pressure or as you change temperature. And this really is working to explain how the pressure and the temperature of phase transitions are related. Okay, so let's start with this dpdt and let's do some derivation. Now, this, this is where we started in the last slide. And we're going to say, based upon the ideal gas law, that the change of this, of this volume is approximately equal to RT over P. Um, this is this is a fairly large approximation, um, but it turns out that it works pretty well for us, even when we aren't dealing with gases, strangely enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that in for delta V, and that gives me this expression. All I did was I flipped this I flipped this guy upside down so that I was doing one over or dividing by that, um, getting me this expression. And this allows me to rearrange and I can get my P's on one side and my T's on the other side. And then I'm going to take the, um, I'm going to integrate both sides and with some moving around of the negative signs, I get that the natural log of P is equal to is equal to the delta H of vaporization over R times one over T B minus one over T. And so T B, this is what is known as the normal boiling point. This T is the boiling point at pressure P. And this pressure is a pressure that is not equal to one bar. Because the normal boiling point is the pressure equal to one bar. Now, if you wanted to work with this where you're looking at, you, have, you don't have the normal boiling point, you can make this more generic. You can say that the natural log of P2 over P1 is going to be equal to minus delta H over R times one over T2 minus one over T1. Um, now, why do I have a negative sign here and this equation, and then the equation in red does not have a negative sign? It has to do with the ordering of T1 and T2 in the parentheses. Um, so in the book, they are doing T1 minus T2. And that means that the negative sign is inside of the parentheses. I am doing T2 minus T1. So the negative sign has to be outside of the parentheses to account for that. I promise you it works. Um, I've had this debate in my head many, many, many times. Okay, so let's talk about boiling. 
So substances boil when their vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So what do I mean by that? Well, so when we have a liquid, a liquid is always in equilibrium with some gas above the liquid. And this equilibrium has a certain basically K value. And so there's going to be a certain amount of gas that exists above that liquid. That gas is producing a pressure. And as we add heat, what we are doing is we are shifting this equilibrium so that we get more and more of our liquid into the gas form. And so we are increasing our vapor pressure. When that vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure or external pressure, boiling happens. So this is why pressure cookers cook at a higher temperature. It takes a lot more heat to reach the pressure of the pressure cooker to get boiling to happen. This is also why it takes so much longer to cook pasta at 10,000 feet in the mountains because our atmospheric pressure is lower and so it doesn't take as much heat in order to get this liquid to boil and so it takes us a lot longer to cook our pasta. Okay, so let's do an example. This example is that the vapor pressure of ethanol at 298 Kelvin is 0 0.320 bar. And the normal boiling point is 351 Kelvin. We want to find the standard enthalpy of vaporization for ethanol. Okay, so to solve this problem, we're going to do the natural log of our pressure is 0 0.320. We are looking for our delta H of vaporization. The R that we want is 8.314 joules per Kelvin times mole because we're working to find this delta H, which is going to be an energy per mole. And so we need our R to match. 1 over TB is the normal boiling point, so that's 351 Kelvin. And then T is our other temperature. And so now if we do the algebra that we need to do, we find that delta H of vaporization is equal to 1.87 times 10 to the fourth joules per mole or 18.7 kilojoules per mole.